Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina visiting East Coast Volkswagen and I'm checking out a 2019 Volkswagen Ardeon in the SEL Premium R-Line trim level with 4Motion. This Ardeon is sitting on 245 40 Continental tires wrapped around 19-inch alloy wheels with a two-tone gloss black it also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors on all four wheels. The name of this color is Pure White. And I'm glad it's a light color to show off to you guys, so that way you can see all the accent that this vehicle has. Some of these things blend in with the darker colors. So you can see here the base in the front has that gloss black portion right in here. And then the chrome across the bottom. And you have those horizontal slats, I guess you can say, there in the grill that extend into the headlights, which the accents start right here. LEDs powering all the exterior lights on this vehicle. So your low and high beams are powered by LEDs in projector tubes. They have black bezels. So that way the separates the lights uh, from the, so they don't blend in or bleed into the turn signal or the accent lighting here in the front. It also has parking sensors across the front. Has a little camera here as well, here in the lower portion. That's gonna get dirty, I suppose, so you have to keep that clean. Uh, but that's part of that 360 camera system. I'll show you that when we get on the inside. So you even have a parking sensor here on the very side as well. Looking at the profile, you can really appreciate the length here. And the length is ac accented by this uh, chrome here at the very bottom, here in the back. Then you have that strong line here. That belt line is pretty, pretty nice and it extends in. Now, there's a little bit of disconnection right here because the hood actually comes down right here to the wheel well. So it goes all the way down here. So that kind of just doesn't blend in to my eyes with that particular line. Now you do have a divider with this badging, but you notice how this line kind of blends in perfect. Um, but then you get, it just kind of looks a little, little weird there at the top of the wheel well. Now the chrome around the glass kind of solidifies that glass, especially considering the uh, pillar here in the center is a gloss black. So if you were to tint all this glass, it would kind of make it one solid piece looking. Also, the sunroof has this black painted portion around it to kind of solidify it with the windshield. Now the camera system, so you have a little camera, kind of like a GoPro wide angle lens right in here on both side mirrors as well as your backup camera in the back. This is what the key looks like and, and other Volkswagens share the same key design. It has the lock and unlock, the ability to open up the power lift gate, and remote start. There's also a physical key on the inside in case you need it. But it's designed and it's fairly light too so as long as you have it inside your pocket you can walk up to the vehicle, put your finger over this little sensor right here indicated by that line to lock, lock the doors, okay? Uh, you can put your hands over it or whatever. Also, power fold mirrors will fold in when you have that setting. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle and there's a sensor back there. Now, your, the key has to be within a close proximity, a few feet of this outside of the door. Can't be on the inside, it has to be on the outside and allow you access to the vehicle. Now, there's a physical key location behind this little cover right here that will, you, you will need to take that off in order to access. Passenger door swings out quite wide and has a really good opening here. Now, this one has the stone gray and raven leather interior. And check out the inside of the passenger side door. A lot of soft touch here. So, up in here, soft 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 and soft down here is your hard plastics so it even continues a little bit down in here but then hard plastics there you can see the uh, smoked chrome and the kind of like a metallic carbon fiber style look accent that ex continues on the dashboard as well now this pocket has a felt lining and it's pretty good size. Now you will, if you have a large bottle or something, you will have to kind of squeeze it around the handle there. Have the R-line badging here in the threshold on the seal plate. So the power seats here on the passenger side, they go up and down, tilt, 
and then you have a power lumbar adjustment as well on the passenger side nice look at that uh, hopefully the camera can do it d justice with all this uh, shadows and stuff but really impressive looking seats the colors uh, the overall design also the leather it has these uh, perforations that are multi-size so you have a uh, smaller one here and then you have the larger ones in here and then the stitching and the contrasting colors all really are pleasing I really like the way they look it looks really nice and these are heated and vented seats as well All right, here's some leg room. Now this seat's not all the way back, but it uh, gives you kind of a normal position, I guess you can say. And we'll compare this size, this to the seats there in the back. It does have a locking glove compartment with a felt lining. And the dash is also a soft touch. And even goes down in here, soft touch. Now the, this right here, this part on the glove compartment is hard touch. Now the back seats have a lot of room and, and it's really amazing. But so one drawback I can see here is the doorway is much smaller than the front. So you can see uh, the seats are kind of recessed behind this, this pillar here. So you have to kind of get in and around that to get into the seat. So that's one thing to consider. Now the back seats, uh, the back doors, uh, they have soft touch here. And then you have the hard touch, soft, soft, and hard. So a slightly less soft touch surfaces as the front. It does have the pocket with the felt lining here in the bottom. Little sill plate there, looking pretty cool. Now the back seats are heated. Now you notice it doesn't have the little perforations in it. It's just a regular smooth leather. It does have really nice white stitching. That's another thing that kind of pops out. Now it has the ISOFIX. Now it's labeled ISOFIX, but in the United States we call it a latch system. Lower anchor and tether it's for children. But uh, the thing about these is they're basically push in and then that way you can latch on uh, the latch system to the, the, those anchors. Uh, but you, you notice they push in and they don't, you don't lose them. Some of them you take off. These you push in so that way you don't ever lose them. So I think that's really good. Really good idea. And these seats fold down in a 60-40 split but you also have a pass through here in the center portion. In case you want to put skis or a long box or whatever you can lift that up then you can fold this down and you have an armrest with cup holders there's a significant hump here in the center portion there's also a 12 volt power supply under there and a uh, there's your heated seat controls for your seats back here and a temperature adjustment for your rear climate control as well as your vents now there's pockets on the back of both front seats you can see right in here, both of them have that. Fuel door is here on the passenger side and it's locking. So when the vehicle's locked, it locks as well. To unlock it, you just unlock the vehicle using the key or whatever, and it will unlock the fuel door as well. So it's kind of automatic. So it has a traditional cap tether, but it has a little post here, which is a little bit different from other manufacturers. So that way you can kind of put that right there to get out of your way. Time to see how I fit in this vehicle. So here in the front, let's get in. I'm like in Myrtle Beach and it's like motorcycle weekend or something. But getting in the vehicle is fairly easy. Now the seat's kind of far up for me let me go all the way back because it goes way back there we go so that's all the way back my leg is a little bit too much leg room because I like the tilt of the floor to be a little bit more 
but wide open space here looking good and um yeah this is open that's good enough and my leg room and knee room is all good so with the seat all the way back let's just see what it's like getting in the back seat all right so yeah it has some extra knee room here i'm six feet tall just to mention that and um so yeah this is pretty good actually headroom isn't all that great for me anyway uh i'm i got a little bit above my head but it's not like super big or anything all right let's scoot over here see if i can scoot this hump in the center is huge all right let's scoot over here now this seat's more in a more normal position. I guess it's not quite all the way back, but it's not just a smidge more forward. So you even have a little bit more room. Yeah, it's uh, it's not super over impressive like I thought it was gonna be as far as the leg room back here, but it's good. Getting in and out is kind of a little bit of an issue for me, but you don't have to do it as much. But yeah, has a lot of room back there. It's, uh, it's definitely not cramped, but it's of course is the back seat, and it's a sedan, so they always have to, you know, small make the smaller doors here in the back. Checking out the back of the vehicle, there's a little shark fin type antenna here at the very top, in gloss black. The third brake light is actually here at the top of the glass. It's kind of blended in really nice. Barely noticeable until, of course, it's illuminated. It's powered by LEDs, of course. And then you have this uh, deck lid spoiler in a gloss black. Very subtle as far as its size. But it does uh, kind of add some styling there. And like I mentioned, all the, the lighting on the exterior of the vehicle is LED. So all back here, turn signal, everything is LEDs. Parking sensors across the back as well. And then you have the, emphasizing the width, of course, uh, the horizontal chrome here at the very bottom. And it spells out Ardeon across the back. Now the backup camera is actually hidden uh, behind this badge, so it kind of pops out and reveals itself when you put it in reverse. Uh, that's good because it keeps it clean. <laughs> so the one in the front of the vehicle, you're gonna have to wipe the bugs off of it, but the one here in the back, you won't have to worry about so much. Now, one thing, I, the first thing I looked at on this vehicle is the exhaust to make sure that the actual exhaust flows through these surrounds, and it does. Uh, some of the Volkswagens, like the Tiguan, basically just has fake exhaust tips back here, just plastic chrome, and then the exhaust actually dumps underneath the vehicle. So this one actually has it through the surrounds. Okay, so there's a couple ways. This is actually a hatchback too. So all this lifts up, all that. So there's a couple ways you can use the key or you can push a button, uh, pull this out basically, uh, or you can kick your foot under here, see if it'll work. Yep, it works. So there we go, look at that. Lifts it right on up. In addition to our foot, we can pull this up like so, like that, and it'll go up. And we already have a whole bunch of stuff back here in the cargo space, but I'm gonna take that out and show you what it looks like with the shade out and the, all the stuff out of the way because it is a wide open spot especially when you fold down the seats. But even with you, when you have passengers in the back seats, you still have a tremendous amount of cargo space and easy to access, but considering it's a hatchback. So you have some hangers here on each side and a little light here and here. So you have du dual lights. So that way you can illuminate the back a little bit better, especially considering it has black carpet, so it's a little bit hard to see. At nighttime, there's a little cubby right here with a removable door, so you can put that back in place. What else is cool is it has a full-size spare tire, not just a full diameter, but an actual spare tire that matches perfectly 
the, the vehicle spare the tires the tires on the wheels and the wheels themselves so you can swap out the wheel with a spare tire and you would never know the difference as long as you have the key inside the vehicle uh, is the, the, the keys designed where you can use the vehicle 100% but you just get in put your foot on the brake I got the key in my pocket you could be in a cup holder in a bag whatever and you just push this button Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now the floor mats are not in place yet, but they do snap in place. That way they don't slide around on you. This one says is the R-Line has the raised rubber aluminum pedals with a footrest, which looks really nice. So let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. And here's the hood, hood latch. Uh, you notice it's kind of here in the center of the door. When you close this door, it covers it up to keep you from accidentally pulling it while you're you know, driving or something. But it's right there and easy to find. To open the hood, there is a latch right here in the very center. Just reach in, move it to the left, and lift up. Now it goes up by itself. I mean, it stays up by itself like so. It has those shocks. So there's the latch right there. You can see it. Just move it to the left. Now you notice the hood uh, extends down right here to the, uh, the wheel well. So it kind of different type of hood to accomplish a certain design that they're going for it also has some insulation here but it also I don't know if you notice these this is a piston to keep the hood up see that piston back there there's also one here uh, this is to raise the hood up uh, to pop the hood up so that way there's some crumple zone in case you hit a pedestrian so uh, or something like that to, to where it actually gives a little gives a little bit for the pedestrian's body if you were to hit somebody so that's the intention of the pop-up hood among other you know things but that's a something you don't see on a lot of vehicles that the pop-up hood design so you can see it has an insulated firewall with the heat shielding back here and the uh, insulated battery, which is under the hood, easy to get to. So it has the 2.0 liter turbocharged stratified injection. So it's turbocharged, that's in the name. Stratified would be a direct injection, uh, kind of like a combination of the turbocharger and the direct injection. So that, you know, the strata, stratification layers of uh, technology. So you can see the turbocharger in the back and right here is pretty cool. There's your oil filter, it's easy to get to. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the passenger except for it has a few more buttons. So you have your door lock controls here just like the other side. Your power windows are here. All four are automatic. Now the rear windows roll down about halfway. They don't go all the way down. That's as far as they go. Then the front two, down. Now you notice there's no frame here. So it does uh, move the window down slightly to open and close the door. Side mirrors are adjusted here. It also has the power folding side mirror. So they will fold in. And you can set it to where when you lock the vehicles, they'll fold in. Uh, and then you can adjust them there. The ability to open up the power lift gate here on the door as well. And of course, the driver's seat has to one up the passenger because it has two presets as well as a massage in addition to the power lumbar adjustment and the power seats. But it also is ventilated and heated and it looks fantastic and is very comfortable. So this is all good. Here to the left of the steering column, there's a little storage compartment that's felt lined. It has a place for an SD card right there as well. Here's your headlight switch. Now it has uh, off, automatic parking and headlights on. And it has a mystery button here. So this button, it looks like a little cloud with rain on it. There's no fog lights on this vehicle. I push the button and all it does is raise the headlights a little bit. So I'm not sure exactly what that is. If you can tell us in the comment section, I'll go ahead and pin your answer, the correct answer, in the top of the comments so that way everybody can see it. So you look for there for that, that particular feature so this is something new okay so tilt and telescoping steering column that locks in place right here 
and the, the, the lever is really easy to find and easy to use for the most part. Okay, sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. I'm six feet tall, just to give you an idea of the leg room and everything. Let me move a little bit further back because there's a little bit of extra room here. I can go down, that's as far back as it goes, as far down as it goes. And it's a little bit, probably a little bit too far back for me without doing some serious adjustments here. Yeah, it's a little bit too far back for me. Lots of room here, potential room here. So the steering wheel, leather wrapped, has a flat bottom, gloss black, has the R-line badging here. Paddle shifters, that's pretty cool with the eight-speed transmission. Now you have uh, these buttons here on either side. This is your volume for your radio. Here on the right side is change through your tracks or your radio station, that kind of deal. Cruise control, this is the adaptive cruise control. Uh, so you can set, resume. This is your um, safety features. And then this is the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. On the right side, these buttons here correspond with the screen between the gauges. We'll get to that in just a minute. You have the voice recognition and that's about it. Everything is here in the center because this is a digital cockpit. So there's a lot of customization, a lot of information that you can have displayed here on the screen. Windshield wiper controls are here on the right side. On the left side is your turn signal and your dimmer switch. It also has an automatic high and low beams. Okay, so looking at this screen, so this is a 100% screen. There's no, di there's no physical dials or anything like that. So that way you can customize everything uh, pretty much. So you hit this view button and you can scroll through. So you can change, right now it says gear and speed, economy and range. Economy, navigation, and driver assist, uh, driver assist systems. You can also, let's go ahead and change that back uh, to gear and speed. That would be my default there. You can also display the navigation here in the center portion as well. So you notice these buttons right here. So if we scroll through, you can see a little menu system pop up here and you can make the selections you want. Whatever you want here in the center portion besides the map. Now the map is a separate deal. You have to swap the map. You can't add to the map from the screen over here. So when you have the map over here on the screen, has a gesture control. You have your swipe your hand up, it gives you additional controls. Hit that button, and it takes the map from here and puts it here in front of you. Swipe, just kind of wave up, and then you can always bring it back to the screen. Has an analog clock, that's kind of neat. I guess it's kind of like the Chrysler's, I guess. So there's two buttons right up here. One is your park assist. So this will actually uh, guide you into parking and turn the steering wheel for you, uh, parking into a parking space. This one is to pull up your 360 view camera without changing the gears or anything. So you just push that and it opens up the camera in the back and then we get a full 360 view. So it basically stitches together all the views from all the cameras around the vehicle and corrects their distortion because they're, you know, look differently. And you can see there's slight variations in the lines and stuff like that. Now when we put it in reverse, it pops up the, the backup camera. We push menu. Now we have a combination of backup camera and the 360 view. So that way when we move, we have active guidelines we also can see what's in front and side of the vehicle. We can look at the front view, side view, side view, and rear view. Now the side views, the reason why this is significant is because you're gonna see the tire right here. So as I turn the steering wheel, you can see the tire pop out. And so that way, if you wanna get really close to a curb or something, uh, you can get, see right on that, that front wheel. Same thing with the front, if we want to get close to the view, you know, very close to a curb or something. Now, I keep putting my hands next to the screen and it pops up additional menu because that's that, um, you know, the gesture controls. But you notice it's a really super wide. You can see the bumper on either side. So that way you get, you can see right where you're pulling up to. 
and you can see the gesture. Every time I wave my hand, we can get the top down. We get the super wide. So different views like that. Same thing, Le left, right, and both sides. The back, we can see side. We can basically see the lines there. Uh, we can get an idea as far as parking. We can see like backing up to uh, a trailer or whatever. And we can see, uh, you know, basically both directions behind the vehicle, I guess you can say. So that way as we're, as we're backing up, uh, if there's any cars coming, we'll see them from either direction. So that way if you can't see around the vehicle around you, beside you, uh, it'll show up here. It also has the blind spot detection system and courier cross traffic alert. The, the monitors are here on the side mirrors, uh, right here on the, um, right on the interior right there. And so if there's a vehicle in your blind spot, it'll illuminate there, but also let you know in the rear cross traffic alert system as well when you're backing out of a parking space. So that's handy. So the camera system is very advanced, as you can tell. That's one of the my most favorite features of the, about this about this particular vehicle is the camera system. Okay, so looking at the going back to the screen here, uh, we have some soft touch buttons around the edge. We have, of course, the gesture controls. Every time I move my hand, it pops up, and then we have um, the physical volume and tune through the stations uh, buttons there. Everybody likes to have a knob. So looking at the radio, we can, let's see if we can get it to work. We can swipe. There's nothing to swipe to, I guess. We can go like that. Anyways, it's not, it's not doing anything in this particular screen, uh, but the gesture controls are, when I go like that, it pops up. So it's not doing anything more than that. Media, so we have different media sources, auxiliary inputs, uh, Bluetooth, uh, SD cards, USB, all that stuff, auxiliary CD, and the glove compartment. Once we pair the phone, we'll have access to this feature here in which we can send and receive calls. Voice recognition, you can have some... Pardon? Cancel. Cancel. So there's, it kind of pops up and shows you some different options there. Navigation, so we can change to the map between the screen up there on the uh, the dash, put in destinations here and all that stuff. Then you can go to apps here, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and MirrorLink are all available. You just have to plug in your device uh, to the system. So there's the USB port here and you can lay it, your device down here. So the car, so this will kind of show you uh, information about the um, fuel economy, different things like that. And then your menu, this is where you can go into your settings. And let's see if the gesture control is gonna work. Nope. I guess it only, oh, I guess it's just moving your hand just kind of pops up extra features, I guess you can say. All right, so down here is your climate control. So it's a dual zone driver and passenger temperatures are here and it displays up above. Fan speeds in the center, you do have an automatic mode. When we push menu, it pops up here on the screen and gives us a visual reference uh, on where the air is actually blowing, the way we have it set. We can sync the driver and passenger, uh, and we can you know, manually adjust everything. Front and rear defrosters are here, air conditioning, ventilated and heated seat controls for the driver and passenger, where you want the air to blow, right, like so. And the, it's a three-stage ventilated seat three-stage heated seat. The heated steering wheel button is right here. So it is a heated steering wheel, but the button's way over here, so that way your passenger can mess with you in the summertime and put it and turn it on without you knowing it. So that's, I think that's pretty cool to kind of add some fun to the trip. Let's look at the drive modes. When we push that, it pops up here, and we have Eco, Comfort, Normal, and Sport. And a custom, you can customize different adjust adjust basically different things so steering drive system uh, chassis control different things like that that you can adjust the way you want it um, so seems like normal for this particular vehicle uh, it just seems like the best option playing around with the different options on this vehicle it's just kind of like a um, kind of works better for me anyway 
the automatic stop start feature is right here so you can turn that off when you get in the vehicle if you don't want the vehicle to turn the engine off when you're sitting at a stop sign or something so it has a electronic parking brake you engage it by lifting it up disengage it by pushing your foot on the brake and pushing it down 12 volt power supply there a little cubby hole and this opens up and you have two cup holders now you notice there's only one place to put a cell phone and that's right in here armrest extends here a little bit and you can push it back and lifts up and I like the way it stops wherever you let go of it so it's not flopping around on you and then you have a USB and auxiliary inputs in this felt lined compartment and check it out they give you a East Coast gives you a microfiber cloth that's nice it's a nice thick one too I have to go ask them to get more of that I could use one of those but yeah that's a good idea because uh, the screen's going to have fingerprints all the time, so it's good to have a microfiber cloth on hand. Auto dim rear view mirror. You can see it's actually auto dimming right now because I have the shade of the light sensor, which is back here. And then you have the uh, controls for your sunroof, which we'll get to that in a minute. And you have some tap lights. Kind of fades on and off. You can turn on all the interior lights. You can have them all on with the uh, the rear lights, and you can have them all on with the door if you like. Then you have some emergency buttons up here. The visors slide out. Have a little clip. Have a light right in here. Kind of a subtle light. And then your mirror. And it feels like a vinyl type material over another plastic type material pretty much the same on the passenger side okay so looking at the sunroof it has a shade that blocks most of the light but not a hundred percent go ahead and open it up that's as far back as it goes there You can also tilt it, of course. Tilts up a little bit, goes back down. Looking at the visibility in the back, you see the headrest getting away a little bit. And you do have some significant pillars back there as well. Uh, but overall, I would say it's pretty darn good because you have all the camera systems, sensors, camera, everything, blind spot detection system, but all that stuff to help you out as well. So really, I mean, once you start getting passengers in here anyway, uh, it's gonna be blocking all your, your view. Now, what would probably be nice is to add a rear view camera to the rear view mirror. That would be pretty neat. But anyways, thank you for watching and thank you to East Coast Volkswagen here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And I'll see you guys next time.